Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be continuing the series on building a Tauri app using Rust and ReactJS. In my previous video, I have explained how we can set up a Tauri app and also I have shown some example where a ReactJS application can interact or communicate with a Rust backend. Today I'll expand on top of this. In the previous video, I've shown a simple example how you can create a Rush function without passing any argument from JavaScript or React. Also, I have shown how we can pass a simple input argument and take in a string array. So we mostly deal with the string primitives. But today I'll go a little bit more deeper so I can define a struct or kind of data model inside Rust and it automatically serialize into a JSON format and we'll get those data with different attributes inside react.js so i'll show you the serialization and deserialization and i'll also create the similar structure in typescript so that it would be very easy for accessing those attributes we no need to write lots of boilerplate code to deal with that and along with those communication between a rush and react system i'll also explain how i refactored the code in react side so now, now, the, now the code looks more manageable and more cleaner. Now let's get started. This is my app component where I have two state to store the table names. Tables, this is a string array. And this is if you for each one table, we may get different rows. So these items will contain multiple rows. In the initial page load or page render, this use effect will be called. And it will call this get tables to retrieve the table names and set that set table state. And this particular get table function I have written inside another folder like backend. This is in the React world only. So dydb dynamodb.ts So all the code related with Rust backend interaction I've kept in this TypeScript file. So the code will more looks more cleaner and logical. So to interact with the Rust backend system, we can use like this invoke function. It is similar to fetch from Tauri Apps API. So we can call this invoke list tables, which is a asynchronous operation. And we no need to pass any argument for listing the tables. It will return a string array from this Rust backend. And we'll store into the result type. If you notice that I am using like await keyword and async keyword. So this async await is a feature of JavaScript to deal with the asynchronous code. And I have, because this particular result is unknown type, so we have to explicitly cast as string array. So the result is a string array, which will contain the list of tables. And here I am calling this dydb uh, .ts file. If you see this, I have imported it. So the backend dynamodb, I have imported like get items and get tables. And I've created another function, list items. So we should take, we should get table name as an input argument, and it will call this get item by passing this table name. So this particular get item function is responsible to interact with the Rush backend and fetch all the rows. And these rows will be, you know, responsible for setting the items here. So if you if you want to see the get items. This is the get items. So we'll call this uh, invoke function list items. But if you see here, uh, in this kind of uh, you know list tables, we are not passing any arguments. But here we are passing these arguments a table name. And uh, I've created a type 
item I'll, this type so I've stored into this types folder types index.tx so if you see here it contain like three fields primary key sort key attributes a dynamo db can contain only primary key in the future i can try to make sort key as an optional but for the for my example i have a composite key in dynamo db which contain both primary key as well as sort key so both will make unique and primary key will contain this column name and column value and similarly the uh, primary key and sort key are only defined one and rest are attributes of free flow free flow so the, like a relational database as we know like all the columns name beforehand but in dynamodb or nosql database we don't know this attribution name pair so it will expecting an attribution name array so this can contain like three columns or five columns or ten and more than that and this particular structure i am going to mirror into the rust system as well so i'll show in a few minutes this needs to be exactly matched with the rush. Then it will make uh, we don't need to do transform to other structure. If you make both are same, so only simple way we can you know cast using as item array. And this structure should match with the rush structure for what we are going to define now. If you make something different, then this type cast uh, it won't complain or it won't throw out error, but we can't access it. The later point of time it will throw error whenever you try to access it. Because even though the structure doesn't match, this uh, type script won't complain here. So it will pass. But whenever we are trying to exactly access this field in the runtime, then it will throw error. So it is always your responsibility to match this item structure with the rush structure. Let me show that um, structure here. This is, a, uh, this is the main function. This list table is a simple one which written a vector of string in the previous video I've already shown it this for describe table another operation yeah this is the structure I'm talking about if you see we have also attribute here struct name and value and here this is the main item which contain primary key sort key attributes if you notice over here the primary key and uh, sort key are separated by underscore this is a convention in rust so if you have a multiple word inside your attribute name so they are separated by underscore not the camel case but in the react uh, in the typescript or javascript lane so we the convention is like you know using camel case like primary key sort key like that so just to make it compatible we are using the serialized trait this is known as macro not trait this is like it is coming from set day so what it will do whenever you create an instance of this item you populate this primary key and sort key and attributes so serialize will convert this particular structure to a json format whenever react will call to it So this serialize is more enough to convert back to the you know JSON. So you don't need to do anything. And there is another at attribute you rename all camel case. So if you don't do that, so your JSON attribute will show as a primary underscore key, sort underscore key, and so on. But if you rename all, then your JSON will look in a camel case. And if you see this attribute also I've created here. I don't think we need to do this camel case here because both are only name and value but we have to do the serialize and debug this for printing it in case you want to print it so uh, this is the struct I've created some initialize uh, thing uh, implementation of attribute whenever you create new it will create like empty name and value but in future i try to find some better way to deal with this because i am not happy to initialize with empty i could have used option but i know that it will be always populated but initialize i'll initialize with empty and then populate the value then i call this from let me show a little bit code about list items 
So once we list item, we'll get the table name. That is a string. If you see over here, this table name will receive from this TypeScript. And I'm creating a rows. This is a, this is a vector item. This is I'm going to return. So initial, I just created an initial placeholder, mutable one. So I'll populate the value. Earlier, I have created this get client multiple times just to make it reusable easy. I've created this get client function here. So this will deal with AWS config and giving this localhost endpoint. So we can give like endpoint to the actual AWS also in the future. So then it will create a client, uh, new client. So all the function will use that one get client and because it is async we are using await and this list item will do a scan operation scan operation is not recommended to do in production issues but because it's client and I want to see a snapshot of the records I'm using a scan method then table name and there are a few more information and I'm converting to back to a you know vector the result type with vector the data is the array So I'm getting these items, looping through it and creating a, you know, temporary row. And I'm looping through this key value pair. This I've shown last time. So doing some kind of bit of transformation specific to DynamoDB and constructing this, uh, you know, uh, rows. And for primary key, I'm creating this key value and, you know, so I'll upload this uh, code snippet into GitHub. This is more application specific, so I'm not going in detail. Because I just want to explain the communication and some of the design principle in a high level so that you can know how you can browse through this code. So I construct this rows and populate to it. So there are two React components I've created. One is table list, another one is item list. Table leads will take this uh, tables as a property. And once you want table, you can send multiple tables here. And once whichever the table is selected, it will call back this uh, function uh, and it will call this list uh, items. And list item will call this uh, Rust backend and then this item list will be populated. So this is how it looks like. In the next video, I already work on this uh, UI improvement. So you will see a different screen from next time. But for the timing, it looks very simple. This is the table list. And once you click it, so you will get this primary key, short key, and this different column names. And if you want to save a quickly look into the tables. So these are different some properties like tables and a callback function and uh, I saw last time this is the URL and listing all the tables and putting some anchor tag and once we click it it will call this on table selected by passing this table name item list it will receive this item list then it will create a table here this time because i got a primary key and short key this looks more dynamic if you watch my previous video i have hard coded this all column names but this is doesn't depend upon this uh, hard coded values so primary key short key it will be rendered in the beginning and then all attribute looping and uh, create these columns so this uh, this particular thing it became more much more cleaner So in the next video, I'll show you how we can customize this UI screen look and feel. So till now, have a good day. Bye-bye.